I'll be right with you, lady. Thank you. Imagine Harry and I leaving for New York tonight, and we'll be gone all month. Isn't that exciting? Oh, it is, but I'll sure miss you, Blanche. Oh, Gracie. Say, honey, isn't this the same furniture you have in your den? Oh, no, ours is still there. But don't feel bad about it, Blanche. The reason you made that mistake is ours is the same kind. <laughs> yeah. That's what confused me. You were with me when that Mr. Singer sold me ours. Oh, yeah, I remember. He was the man I asked about the chair with the leather seat. Well, I hadn't noticed that about him, but I do remember his name was Mr. Singer. <laughs> you come to think of it, I didn't notice it either. Oh, may I help you? Oh, yes, I would like a bag. Something for my husband to carry his odds and ends in. Well, how about a nice overnight bag? Oh, no, they're going to be gone a month. And an overnight bag will only last as far as Albuquerque. <laughs> and after that, he'd have to carry his odds and ends in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, uh, I better have a bag about so big. Oh, I think I have just the thing you want. <laughs> Isn't that Gracie Allen over there? Well, I really don't know. Oh, I'm sure it is. Oh, Gracie, don't you love the smell of old leather? Hmm. Well, I guess old leather smells better than when it's new leather and still on the cow. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, 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 she doesn't mean you. She was talking about this other old leather that they make bags out of. Weren't you, Blanche? I, I, I That's would... quite all right. And tell me, aren't you Gracie Allen? Yes, I am. Well, excuse me for taking liberties, but I'm Mrs. Charles Gibson, and I'm a very dear friend of Harry Von Zell's. Oh, well, if your husband doesn't mind you taking liberties with Harry, we certainly don't do it, Blanche. Uh, Madam. Oh, thank you. Would you tell Mr. Von Zell we're staying at the Plaza Hotel, and Mr. Gibson and I would love to hear from him? Oh, well, is it all right if Harry calls when your husband is in? <laughs> of course. We're all very good friends. Would you tell him we're on a month's vacation here from New York? Oh, what a coincidence. Now you've got to talk to Blanche Morton. She and her husband are leaving for New York tonight. Now, isn't it funny? We just left to come out here, and they're leaving to go back there. <laughs> Small, I'll admit, when you and your husband left New York, it helped. But there would have been room for Harry and Blanche, even if you hadn't. I think I'll take one of those. Blanche, come here. I want you to meet Mrs. Gibson. She's out here on a vacation from New York. This is Blanche Morton. How do you do? Well, come on, let's all sit down. Uh, we're leaving for there tonight. Uh, do you live in New York proper? Blanche. As long as she's married, it's nobody's business. You have to excuse Blanche. Her husband's from Boston. No, no, no. What I meant was if you... I know. You do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> then look, as long as you're both going to be gone a month, why don't you exchange places and then you won't have to pay any rent? Well, it's not a bad idea. I do have a lovely apartment. Have somebody live in my house? I never thought of that. Well, if her husband trusts her with Harry Von Zell, you can certainly trust her with your house. <laughs> we, we could save a lot of money. Let's do it. All right. I know Charlie, that's my husband, will be very happy to save that extra money. He works for the Weather Bureau, and they don't pay too much. Oh, I'm surprised they pay him anything. Out here, we get the weather for nothing. Well, here's your bag. I'll have it wrapped for you. Oh, you got one of those lightweight aluminum cases. They're nice. Yes, we bought one of those, too, and it's wonderful. Why, just since we've been at the hotel, I'll bet we've dropped it and kicked it and stepped on it at least a dozen times. We wouldn't be without it. Well, that's because you're new in town. After you've been here a while, you'll find lots more exciting ways of having fun. <laughs> You see, you're having fun already. <laughs> 
9 o'clock tonight, we're driving the Mortons down to the plane. They're going to New York for a month. I'm going to miss them, especially Blanche. She's always saying to Gracie, Gracie, try to realize you're entitled to half of everything you and George earn, which hands me a laugh. Because the first day we started, we split salaries. We played three days at the Myrtle Theater in Brooklyn. We got $50. I gave Gracie 25 And we've stuck to that arrangement since we've been together. I've never missed a week that I haven't given Gracie her $25. <laughs> and take Blanche's husband, Harry. I'm going to miss him, too. He thinks my lack of education is pathetic. And he hates the way I sing. But I'll say one thing for him, he never laughs at my jokes. <laughs> but none of this is going to stop me. I'm still going to take him down to the plane at 9 o'clock tonight. I want to make sure they get out of town. <laughs> nah, I'm only kidding. If I said nice things about the Mortons, I couldn't get any laughs. And if I didn't get any laughs, I couldn't afford to live in Beverly Hills. So I'm lucky to have neighbors like the Mortons that can live up to all the nasty things I say about them. Harry told me that the minute he gets to New York City, he's going to hit all the hot spots. Like Grant's tomb and the public library and... <laughs> so I said, Harry, if you want a real thrill, why don't you wire New York City and make reservations so you can go up and back on the Staten Island Ferry? <laughs> Scalpers are getting six cents a trip now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Blanche told me the last time they were there, Harry took her to all the old clothing stores. He was looking for a certain garment. It seems that his dad told him that when he proposed to his mother, he was in Yonkers, and Harry wanted to see a pair. <laughs> well, I'm leaving at 9 o'clock. Maybe I'd better do something nice for them. Yeah, I'll get him a basket of fruit. Now, I know what I'll do. I'll sneak in next door and set their clocks ahead an hour. <laughs> Yeah. Edith, you love the bedroom. Oh, good. Well, come on, I'll show you where the rest of the things are. Uh, it's certainly beautiful out here. When I left New York, the weather was terrible. Well, that's why you don't get too much money. Uh-huh. If you gave them better weather, they'd pay you more for it. Oh, I see you know that I'm a weatherman. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid my wife talks a little too much. Oh, no, she doesn't. She barely let it slip about Harry Von Zell. What about Harry Von Zell? Oh, well, never mind. Let's talk about the weather. Now, um, just what do you do? Well, my work's pretty technical. Won't you find it boring talking about the weather? Well, that's hard to say until we talk about it. <laughs> well... I use instruments that detect variations in pressure. A low pressure area causes a drop in temperature. If such an area moves towards you, that means you have a cold front. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And then if you turn around, you get a cold back. <laughs> yes. Well, that's uh, what I do. You know, it's not as boring as I thought it would be. Uh, tell me more. That's Harry Morton. I'd love to, but I have to have my instruments. Uh, not to change the subject, but what is this gadget? Oh, uh, that, oh, uh, have you got a pencil? No, but here's a pen. No, I'd rather have a pencil. Go ahead, use it. Well, all right. Pencil. Does this a fag go on every year? Yeah. Yeah, it's our annual banquet. You see, all the announcers get together to pay tribute to the people they work for. Don Wilson gets up and says, Jack Benny's a wonderful boss, just gave me another raise. Then Ken Carpenter gets up and says, well, if you think Benny's a good boss, you ought to work for Crosby. My raises are automatic. And then Bill Goodwin gets up and says, Bob Hope was very generous this year. And then everybody looks at me. Don't sit there. Why don't you get up? All right, I'm up. Now, what do I say? Haven't you got anything to say? No. Well, sit down. People think you're an idiot. <laughs> Harry, 
Sorry, I'm only kidding. You can get up and tell them you're getting a raise. Hundred dollars. Uh, oh, thank you, George. <laughs> uh, when is this banquet being held? Uh, uh, the banquet. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you, George. I just made up the banquet to get a raise. Well, good, because <laughs> I made up the raise to get a laugh. <laughs> then hi, Everbank. Hey, Harry, 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 sit down. I got my laugh. Sit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Hello. 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 we've got marvelous news. Harry and Blanche are going to live in a nice apartment in New York, rent-free. Yeah, and the people who own the apartment are staying at our house. So I brought our bags over here and I left them in your living room. Hey, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. And they owe it all to Harry. To me? Mm -hmm. Well, what did I do? These people are friends of yours, Charles and Edith Gibson. Charlie and Edith Gibson? I used to do the town with them in New York. And then we'd go back to their apartment and Edith would fix up some scrambled eggs, say, this brings back memories. I'd like to see them again. They're over at our place now. Oh, I doubt that, Blanche. Why would they bring old scrambled eggs out here? They probably left them in New York. Well, I should think you would know that, Mrs. Morton. I, I, I better phone Harry and tell him the good news about the train. Oh, and don't forget to tell him if it wasn't for Harry Von Zell, this never could have happened. Oh, Gracie, don't even mention that. I, I can't help it, you know. I'm, it's my nature to be friendly and kind and helpful. I always say that if you do nice things for other people, other people will do nice things for you. Am I right, George? <laughs> you get the hundred dollar raise. Thank you. Hello, dear. Oh, Harry, I've got the most wonderful news. Good. I was just going to call you. Our uh, trip to New York will have to be postponed for a week. What? Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but something just came up. Now, what's the good news? Uh, an aluminum bag costs $47. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, we can't leave for New York for a week. Oh, this is awful. What are you going to do with the Gibsons? I don't know. I, I, I didn't dare tell Harry. The wires would have melted. <laughs> I better think of something. Oh, Harry Bonzel, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for being so kind and friendly and helpful. What? You, you see what you've done? You and your friends and their scrambled eggs. <laughs> Gee, I, I, I don't know what to say. While you're up, why don't you congratulate the announcers on getting a raise and see if they can find your job and sit down because you look like an idiot. <laughs> well, are they getting out? I want to change my clothes. Oh, Harry, I went up there and they're unpacking and they're so happy, I just didn't have the heart to tell them. What? You didn't tell them? Blanche, this is my house and I will not be driven out of it just because I happen to be married to an imbecile. Uh, let me say something for a change. I must be an imbecile, or I wouldn't have married you in the... Oh, hello, Mrs. Gibson. <laughs> I was uh, showing Harry where I hurt my finger, wasn't I, dear? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, dear. Here, let me kiss it. <laughs> Here's some... Let's kiss this tickle. <laughs> well, I hope your finger gets better, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, may I ask a favor? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, my husband wonders if you'd mind not using your phone down here for a while. He's using the extension upstairs, and he's putting in a call to a friend of his. Oh, certainly. <laughs> he figured that as long as we're out here so close to Topeka, he might as well say hello. <laughs> um, yes, they'll have a nice little visit. Uh, yes, uh, I'll let you know when you can use the phone. Uh, that is, if you're still here. <laughs> Harry, Blanche, if, if you, you don't ever bite my finger again, you'll wish you hadn't. Don't tell me what to do and what not to do. Don't tell them we're a thousand miles from Topeka and to get out of here. Topeka? Yes. Now, Blanche, you know that ordinarily I'm, I'm calm. I'm peaceful. I'm level-headed. I'm... Flat-headed. Flat. <laughs> there are times when I feel that I'm losing my grip, that something must give, and this is one of those times. Oh, please. Then tell them to get out of here and right now. Well, Mrs. Gibson was right here. If you're such a big shot, why didn't you tell her to get out? What a ridiculous question. I am a man and she is a woman. Now, even in a crisis like this, I still remain a gentleman. 
I am bound by what Dad told me. And he told me never to raise my voice to a woman. You're raising your voice to me, and I'm a woman. Granted, but I'm sure when Dad told me that, he didn't have anything like you in mind. <laughs> Gracie, about this mess with the Gibsons moving in on the Mortons, it's just another case of people butting into other people's business and bungling things. You'll probably excuse it as friendship. Oh, no, I'm not excusing it this time. Well, good. And why should I? This isn't the first time Harry Von Zell has bungled things for everybody. Listen, I've never mentioned Harry Von Zell's name. But you don't have to. We both know who bungled, and we both know Harry Von Zell's name. And the Mortons know his name, too, and so do the Gibson. Okay, okay, but listen a minute. Oh, Judge, stop defending him. And how about sending your new blue top coat to my uncle? Harry Von Zell sent my new blue oh, top coat. Oh, George, nobody loves Harry Von Zell more than I do. But as you said to yourself, he bungles so much, he bungles his own bungling. I said that? You must have said it. Let's not blame poor Harry for everything. <laughs> okay, but a minute ago you said, how about sending my new blue top coat to your uncle? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Harry Von Zell. You know, he's almost as bad a bungler as my cousin Barney. Oh, this is Aunt Clara's son. Yes. He almost got both his arms fractured on account of his bungling. Fractured? How did that happen? Well, you know how Barney used to love to march in the Fourth of July parades and carry the bass drum on his back for his father to pound? Oh, yeah. That, that was quite a sight. Until one year, Barney forgot to bring the bass drum. And before his father noticed that it was missing, he pounded Barney's arms black and blue. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Barney's father was a trifle nearsighted. He was, in fact, that's what finished him. Being nearsighted? Mm-hmm, well, you see, uh, one time he was eating a bowl of soup at one of these little sidewalk cafes in Paris, and he didn't notice it was raining. Go ahead, it's, it's, it's getting interesting. Well, he kept eating, and the rain kept filling his soup bowl, and after taking on about 40 gallons of water... He exploded? He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know Harry Bunzel had nothing to do with this mix-up. I know Gracie did the bungling, but this isn't the first time she's done that. She bungled me into that nice car I'm driving in this home in Beverly Hills. You see the suit I'm wearing? One of her small bungles. But don't sell me short. I got a little talent myself. See this collar pin? I found it. Well, anyway, I've straightened everything out. I invited the Mortons to live in our guest room. George, I've straightened everything out. I moved the Gibsons into our house, and I gave them our bedroom, and we're going to sleep in the guest room. Nice straightening, because I just gave the Mortons our guest room. Oh, good. Then all our problems are solved. Tracy. <laughs> Where are we going to sleep? Oh, George, I've had a very tiring day. Ask me in the morning after I've had a good night's rest. Hello, Gracie. Hello, Harry. George, this is becoming ridiculous. I ran into the Gibsons in your upstairs hall, and we find out we're both living in your house. So I thought I'd tell you that Blanche and I quietly picked up our bags and we're back in our place again. I meant well, Harry. I know you did, George. You know, you are without doubt the most philanthropic, beneficent, altruistic individual I've ever known. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to say things like that whenever you want to? It would even be more wonderful if you knew what you were saying. But George, you don't need it. Harry gets along without it, and he's doing fine. <laughs> so you see, Harry, it's an impossible situation. We're living up there, and the Burnses and the Mortons. Six people just don't fit into two bedrooms. With a crowd like that in the morning, I wouldn't know whose teeth I was brushing. <laughs> hotel, but we couldn't get our room back. Yeah, well, look, now you can stop worrying. I have a little apartment over on Roxbury. Here's the key. You stay there until your vacation is over. Oh, thank you. Won't that be putting you out? Putting me out? No, oh, no. Mother did that years ago. That's why I'm living alone. <laughs> oh, oh, Harry, you're sweet. Oh, oh thanks, Harry. Okay. Come on, Edith, let's get our bags. Uh, where are you going? Well, we found out the Mortons are living here, too, so we're leaving. Oh, no, no, no. The Mortons have gone back to their house, so you're staying with us. Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh. 
Mr. Burns, may I ask you a question? Sure. Is every day like this in your house? Oh, no, no. Sometimes it gets complicated. <laughs> ridiculous for you to stay at a hotel. If the Gibsons are in your apartment and the Martins are back in their house, why don't you stay with us? We have an extra room. Oh, well, that would be wonderful. I'll go home and get my stuff. All right, and hurry back because I've invited everybody for dinner. All right. Oh, and Harry, I want to warn you. I know you mean well, but after this, if you really want to help people with their bungling, let them do it themselves. <laughs> I didn't realize how late it was getting watching all those television shows. I thought they were very interesting tonight. You know, I, uh, I hate to say this because I'm in the same business, but I thought that comedy show we watched, I thought the plot was a little too hard to follow. Oh, I got well, I didn't hear it. Think so? No. no. Charlie, I get it. Charlie, dear, it's getting rather late. Don't you think we ought to go to bed? Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. And Mrs. Burns, it was a lovely dinner. It oh, certainly good was. Good night. Thank you. Good, good night, Charlie. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Well, Blanche, we better be running along, too. Good night. Good, good night, night, Gracie. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, Harry, right, we better call it a night, huh? Good night. Good night. Harry, where are you going? Uh, well, Gracie said I could use the guest room. Good night. Good night, Harry. Good night. All right. <laughs> show where Mabel Albertson as Mrs. Gibson, Don Sheldon as Mr. Gibson, and Ross Elliott as the luggage clerk. Skyway and other luggage from our backs.